Hi, I'm Henning from Nomos.com and in today's tutorial, you are finally going to learn how to use Anchor Points. Anchor Points is an incredibly powerful feature that I honestly think is a pretty essential one to understand to become an effective texture artist, but is often overlooked or overcomplicated. So in this video, we are going to cover how to use Anchor Points in a highly practical and a really simple way. We're going to go through a few examples on how to actually use Anchor Points in a day-to-day -day manner. So uh, let's get into it. At the very core, Anchor Points is a very simple feature to use. It's simply a way for you to reference texture data in another location. Meaning, if you change the first paint of data, it's going to automatically update in the second location as well. So let's get into how to actually use Anchor Points. First, we are going to create a new layer, just a regular paint layer. Then we are going to just paint anything. This is completely irrelevant right now. We're just painting some kind of data. Then we are going to name the layer. It's important to name the layers before we use anchor points, simply because this can get quite messy. If you have a lot of anchor points, this just gets confusing. So let's just get into a habit of naming our layers. Then we are going to go under the effect stack on the layer we want the anchor point to go from. And now we can see here it says anchor point name, and this is the name. You can also rename this and references. No references found. This simply means that this is not being used anywhere. The moment we connect this to another layer, this is going to display what layer that is. Then we are going to create a fill layer and we are going to go down to the color and we're going to make this red just so that we have some data in this layer. Then right click, add a black mask. And then in order to actually use the anchor point, we have to add a fill layer and then we have to go down where it says grayscale. And now you can see there's a tab called anchor points and we have our paint. And now you see we have this connected nicely up. We have to be aware of only a few simple settings. The first one is the reference channel. This is where the data actually comes from. In this case, we painted this in the color channel. You can see here on the bottom, we painted this in color because that's the only thing that's enabled. But if we were to paint this, for instance, under height or roughness, we would have to set this to either height or roughness, depending on which one it is. We can also go in and we can use our levels here as well, which is really handy because you can actually grade the anchor point directly in the anchor point itself. You don't have to go in and add levels on top of this. Then we can hide the original anchor point. And now you can see we have a red mask here. We can go in and we can change the color of this one to something else. And we can also go in, change the roughness for this one as well. And now this is all going to dynamically change. So we can continue to go in and just paint on this one. This now dynamically changes as we are painting. And this is the very core of using anchor points. We have a painted layer right here. And the second layer here simply references that one. If you go into the actual anchor point, you can now see that we now have a reference here, which is really handy because now we can very easily see that. As I'm hovering over this as well, you can also see that this gets highlighted. Now, a really important caveat about anchor points before we proceed, this breaks if the anchor point is above the layer it's going into. In this case, now it's above and it breaks entirely. It has to be below the layer is going into. Otherwise, this simply does not work. This is not really a teleport system that teleports the data anywhere you want to. This is a very specific system where it goes from bottom to top like this. If you set up some anchor points and you can't get into work, you can't get it to show up here for whatever reason and you keep on trying, this is probably one of the main reasons because the layer is indeed below the anchor point. So if you're using this to create masks, which we'll get to in a second, you have to create the masks at the very bottom just to ensure that it actually feeds correctly into the additional layers. But at the very core, this is it. You paint data in one layer and you're referencing this data in other layers. So next up, I'll show you how I create anchor points in a really practical manner when it comes to creating maps like general masks or particularly the specular roughness map as well. So what we'll do is we are going to create a new folder and this is going to be called spec R or roughness, whatever you want to. Then in this group, we are going to be creating a fill layer. In this fill layer, we are going to add a black mask and we are also going to add a paint, which means that we can now just paint anything in here. And then we are going to be duplicating this a few times around just so we have some general mask that we can work with here. The first one is going to be called eyes. The second is jaw. And the third is nose. So we are going to be creating three masks for our character. I usually start my character process with simply creating masks. So if I were to start texturing this guy, 
I would be spending about an hour maybe just creating a lot of different masks because you keep reusing these masks over and over and over again. So some masks I would be creating for this character here would be the intersection between the gums and the teeth, the eyes, just the wet line around here, the nose, the um, mouth itself, the inside, maybe this flap here. There's a bunch of different ones because you can reuse these over and over and over again. So starting off a project by creating a lot of masks is a huge time saver. So we are going to get started with this one. Let's just create a mask for the eyes like so. Very simple. Done. Then we're going to make a separate one for the jaw as well. Just like this. And then we're going to make one for the nose as well. And there we go. Very nice and easy. Then we are going to set up anchor points for all these layers. And then we're going to make a very quick roughness map based on these masks. So under the eyes, create an anchor point. And I can see it has eyes mask. Under the jaw, same thing. And under the nose, the same thing. This is why we name things. Because now already we have three anchor points. And we would have maybe 20 just for the masks. Then we'll create a new group. And we're going to call this roughness. This is where we will make our actual roughness map. Then we'll make a filler. We can also just hide all the other ones here as well if they're not already hidden. The visibility of the anchor points isn't relevant. What matters is the data that's within the layers. Then we are going to all click on roughness. That's the only thing we want. And the first one here is just going to have a nice neutral roughness so that it's not too intense either way. Then we're going to duplicate this one, control D, then right click, add a black mask. In the black mask, we are going to make a filler like before. Then under the grayscale where we can add images and such, we are going to go to anchor points and now we're simply going to create the eyes. Nothing would have happened here already because we haven't changed the values in the actual filler. So we can change this now. We can make this a lot smoother and now you can see the eyes are actually updating in real time. So we can make this nice and smooth so they're nice and shiny. Then we can do the same thing for the eyes and the jaw as well. Control D, Control D. We should of course name these ones but it doesn't matter too much now. Then we go under our filler a different anchor point in this case you can now see the jaw is affected and we do the same thing for the nose as well and there we go we now have a really really fast way to create a roughness map now of course we could have just painted these ones right we didn't have to use anchor points to create them like this but the advantage of this method is that we can reuse this data in a bunch of different areas let's say we now for instance want to make the um the jaw really dark we can now go under color make this really dark maybe a nice little orangey color like this we can right click add a black mask we can go in here add a fill layer then under grayscale we do anchor point and now we set this to jaw and now you can see the jaw becomes really dark we can of course play with the blending modes for this maybe we want this to be overlay and um, change the opacity as well and now we have just changed the color of the jaw in a very, very simple way using the masks that we created. And of course, this is live. So now if we want to go in and fix the nose here, we can very easily do that. Just enable the layers, go in here, and we can just go in and continue to paint this. If you want this to affect a bigger area, we can do that. Going into the jaw, maybe it's a bit sloppy in some areas, so we can go in and we can just fix this up. And now the, um, the grading that we just did on the jaw is going to automatically propagate through into both the um, the color that we just did and the, the roughness that we did. Next up, I'll cover how to use anchor points with additional channels like the height. In this case, I have a few alphas I made in ZBrush that I want to use here for the height that we can now use as a basis, which is going to propagate nicely into the color and the roughness. So make a new paint layer. We can just call this spots. Then we hit the three key for the projection tool. Go all the way down to the bottom right here. Make sure height is enabled. And then I'm just going to drag my alpha in here. Then I'm just going to be projecting these guys right here. Very nice and easy. Just straight up projecting some little spots here on his chest. Cool. So now I want this data here, this painted data that we just projected onto the character to go into the color channel because I want all these spots to be nice and orange. In this case, you could, of course, just make a new paint layer and just paint these guys by hand. But honestly, that's a really crappy job. This is not a fun one at all. But also, what if it changes, right? It's just not a viable way to do it. So what we'll do is we're going to make an anchor point for the spots. Go on here, anchor point. Now you can see the naming is set up correctly. Then we make a new fill layer. Then we make color orange 
really nice and vibrant orange like this. Then we right click on it, add a black mask. Then we add a fill layer. And in the fill layer, we now set an anchor point, which is spots and nothing is going to happen. And why is that? The reason is because the reference channel is set to base color. But there's nothing in the base color for this. If we were to go in under the actual color here, there's actually no data from this because we haven't painted this in the data. This is in the height itself instead. So hit the M key to go back to the material view. Then we change the reference channel to be height. And now you can see that this pops up very nicely. We can change the color and you can see how nice and interactive this is. Change your color to something completely different. And this will be really, really difficult to do without anchor points. This speeds up your work so much. And since this is simply a fill layer, we can also go under roughness, enable this one, and now we can set the roughness value here to be really low, which now means that or everything going outwards here, all these little pimples are going to be really smooth. Hit the C key to change this and now you can see what's going on. So with a very simple alpha, a regular paint layer and anchor points, we, we've now been able to affect three channels. And of course we can go in here, we can continue painting these dots. And this is of course just a live bridge between all of these ones because the data is dynamically referenced. And again, it breaks if you move the anchor point. So yeah, that's Anchor Points for you. If you liked this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.